It's either you have it or you don't. That sounds like excuses to me. I mean, you, you gotta figure it out. If you really have an obsession to figure it out, you will figure it out. And every puzzle is constructed differently. Everybody has a different puzzle, man. You just gotta figure out your own puzzle. At the end of every day, you look yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself, did I get better today? If the answer is yes, and you do that for five years, 10 years, 15 years, how much better are you gonna be? Are you getting better every single day? That's the question. And it's just taking small steps. You don't try to get it all done in one day, in one week, in one year. It's the process of getting better every day and doing that for a period of years that then create the masterpiece. Is there more to us than what we see? Is there more that we should understand by being spiritual? One of the main reasons for unhappiness in, uh, in the modern world is we're stuck in that physical form. We're trying to fix the physical form alone. And, you know, take the extreme of that. If, if your unhappiness is physical, then you fix it with drugs with chemistry, it's like you take antidepressants or whatever to try and stop being unhappy. But there are others who don't even need that at all because they realize that this is just part of them and there are other parts of them, another part that is a spirit as religions call it, but I don't know what it really is. And that other part is the happy part that's living outside space and outside time. And if you connect to that part, if you realize, if you understand what you know, the Buddhist philosophy will call the Dharma, the, the, the truth. Hmm? You would realize that sometimes the events of this life are not really that significant at all. Small minds discuss other people. Gossip. Good minds discuss events. Great minds discuss ideas. I was Eleanor Roosevelt. I was also Pauletta's father, my father-in-law. He was a great man. He taught me so much about what being a man really is. I want to end the night with a short video that we recorded of Pauletta's father 30 years ago that my son, Malcolm, gave me an AFI graduate. Just a short 30 second. Uh, video and this is what Pauletta's father had to say 30 years ago. Anyone who has more than you of anything is a thief. That's a, that's quite the proposition. It's very convenient for you. You're justified in stealing it back. In fact, you might be more ob morally obligated to do so. You have a convenient place to put the problem of evil and it's certainly not within you. It allows you to act on your envy and boy, you want to be careful of adopting a belief system that allows you to act on your envy because envy is a very, very, very corrosive motivational force. You know, and if, if no one can have anything more than anyone else, no one can have anything at all because everything is never going to be absolutely equitably distributed. We are either glass half full or we're glass half empty or we're, we're shades of both. That's, that's how it is, isn't it? The truth is this glass is two thirds full. The way you look at it doesn't matter. It is two thirds full, right? And, and what happens for us in the modern world is we're, we're taught to be critical. We're taught to look at this part of it because maybe it makes us look smarter or maybe it's better for our survival. But the truth is the truth. If, if you have the ability to sit and watch Channel 4, you're much better off than being running around in the streets of Syria. You're, in, you're okay. As a matter of fact, most of the time, if you have the brain cycles to feel unhappy, that by definition means that there is nothing you should worry about now. Happiness is not about what the world gives you, how much water is in this glass. Happiness is about what you think about what the world gives you. If you think about it properly, you will always see there is something to be grateful something to be happy about. Because positive emotion is associated with movement forward. Like if you're where you want to be and things are going well, then your behavior should be activated so that you go and get things. Now, one of the negative consequences of that is that if you're really in a good mood, really happy, you're going to be impulsive and make mistakes. You know, because you hear these dough-headed, that's a very minor word, people who are always pushing happiness as the, as the key measure for, for successful existence. It's so ill-informed that it's embarrassing that that even happened. You know, if you live in a world of constant change, what happens is 
they will change. The people that you love, the things that you love, everything will change. So your love goes choppy. It goes up and down, it goes in and out all the time. And the, 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 the interesting thing about love is this. The joy of love is not in receiving it, the joy of love is in giving it. So, so really, when you really think about the moments where we feel in love, we don't feel happy because someone is loving us back only, but mostly we feel happy because we're capable. We're capable of giving love. What you pour out in the world comes back to you in, in orders of magnitudes more, by the way, right? But that's not what it's all about. What it's all about is this. Your happiness equation is events minus expectations. If your love is based on expectations, your events of life are bound to miss those expectations and then love will hurt you, right? But if your love is without expectations, your happiness equation is always solved. Because whatever happens, your unconditional love beats no expectations. I don't expect anything from loving a tree or loving this beautiful place we're in. I mean, the person who built it is a beautiful, beautiful spiritual artist. Right? I love this place. I don't expect the place to do anything for me in return. And that feeling makes me happy. It's not about everything else. It makes me alive. It makes me human. That's... Positive emotion makes people impulsive. Maniacs, for example, which is really, if you, that's mania, right? Bipolar disorder. If you're manic, you're one happy person. Way too happy. Everything is great. Nothing but wonderful things that are beyond your imagination are going to happen to you. And they're going to happen fast. And so you're down to the mall to buy everything. To be overwhelmingly enthusiastic about everything sounds like a real blast. And I've seen full-blown manics and they're having plenty of fun. But it is not a pleasant thing to behold. They're just all over the place. And, you know, yeah, it's really not good. When you think of, of our physical form as a machine, you will realize that happiness is very, very misunderstood. Number one, happiness is your default setting. You're, you're born happy, right? You know, when, when you're a child, you don't need an Xbox or, you know, someone to give you a compliment to feel happy. You're happy if you're given your basic needs. We grow out of happiness because of how the, the modern world convinces us that we should have certain things in a certain setup that is not really what life gives us sometimes. And so it's a very predictable, uh, uh, you know, unhappiness is very predictable. It, it, it actually happens through an equation that I share in the book. You know, your, your happiness is equal to or greater than the events of your life minus your expectation of how life should behave. And when, you, when, when your brain is solving the happiness equation, it's looking at every event around it. And if there is nothing wrong with the event, it leaves you alone. So your default setting is not. But when, when your brain thinks that, hey, something's wrong, I don't like life as it is right now, I don't believe this is safe for us if you want. Then your brain lights on a, a, you know, a lamp on the dashboard and said, you know, so it says something like check engine, you know, something's wrong, I need you to pay attention to this. And to pay attention, it triggers you not in the form of a thought, but in the form of a negative emotion, you know, sadness, fear, worry, anxiety, guilt, shame, whatever all those emotions that we feel. By the way, if you lower your expectations, you're going to be happy more often, but you will have a mediocre life. We were put here for a reason. God created man, and God intends for us to love all mankind. And by being in a loving mood, caring for one another, that's our purpose for life. We should care for one another. And we should love one another. The least we can do is consider what we've done and think about the young people, the future, and individually, collectively do the best we can to try and turn this thing around. I blame no one. I look in the mirror. On the other side of it, what an opportunity we have, because tomorrow's the first day of the rest of our lives. So what an opportunity we have to practice what he preached. Good night.